In the previous video, we went through the historical classification systems for thoracolumbar fracture. In this video, we'll talk about the Telix classification system. I am Mohamed Daz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. So the Telix classification system relied on three independent predictors. One is the morphology, which is basically the shape of that fracture. Second is the integrity of the posterior ligamentous uh, complex. And third is the neurological status of the patient. So the morphology can be divided into four types. And then you give a score out one out of four. Integrity is again from zero to three. And the neurological status, as you can see, from zero to three. And that basically will give you a score. If the patient gets a score between zero to three, that means that patient unlikely need surgical intervention. Four is kind of depending on the surgeon choice or preference, or if there are other factors that needs to be considered in that patient. More than four, then very likely that the patient would require surgical intervention. The question now will be, how do we, defi how do we define the morphology of the fracture? So the, to make it easy for you to understand, always think about the forces that are applied into the spine. So if there is an axial force, that basically will lead to compression of the uh, spinal vertebra. If that axial load is so severe, that might lead to burst of the uh, vertebral body. If the spine kind of go into flexion, excessive flexion or excessive extension, that will lead to distraction injuries, which can lead to injury to the ligamentous structures. Or if the spine is rotated or translated out of its place, that again will lead to different type of injury. This is simply the morphology as you can see here. So compression, which can be a simple compression with wedge deformity, that will take one point. First, where there is disruption of the posterior vertebral wall, with sometimes you get retrobulgion of fragments into the spinal canal, that would take two points. And then translation and rotation, that would take three points. Or distraction injury, as I said here in this example, take four points, but it's basically because of disruption of the uh, posterior ligamentous complex. Then after you identified the morphology of the fracture, then now the question is the posterior ligamentous complex injured or not? So what's actually the posterior ligamentous complex? It's anything from the ligamentum flavum, as you can see here in this picture, all the way back to the supraspinous ligament. So all of that is, the act is providing a lot of support on the posterior aspect of the spinal column. So if there's disruption of the ligamentum flavum, you can see this on either the CT or MRI scan. If there is disruption of the facet joint or the, um, the spinous process or the supraspinous ligament and the intraspinous ligament. How do you identify that? You can do that with the CT scan, as I said, looking into the bony anatomy and see if there's disruption of the facet or the spinous process or widening of the uh, uh, interspinous space or looking into the MRI scan, getting a stir sequence MRI scan to look at the ligamentous structures, you probably will see a high signal on the stir sequence, seeing the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament, and the ligamentum flavum. And you can also see the bone uh, edema with high signal within the vertebral body. Sometimes it becomes a little bit tricky to identify the injury to the ligamentous structures and the uh, morphology of the injury because sometimes we think okay is that a burst of fracture that was so severe that led to a posterior ligamentous complex injury or was it actually a distraction injury that caused injury to the posterior element but with the force applied that led to a compression fraction as well either way you can see that in this the first case on the left that would take about five points so that's still high Again, on the right side, this would take about seven points. So both of them is four plus and likely both of them would require surgical intervention. The most important thing is to describe the findings on the scan, either the CT and the MRI scan, and look for those um, predictors, which is the morphology and the ligamentous structures. There are other things that we need to keep in mind in a specific group of patients. So some patients like enclosing spondylitis, you cannot use the same thought process like a normal patient because those patients would have a high risk of instability. So those patients would be treated in a different way and in a lot of the time they likely might require surgical intervention. You can see here in this picture this patient has an enclosed spine and there is a fracture line uh, through the um, 
the spinous process here and also through the uh, body of the vertebral um, of the vertebra. Also in the thoracic fractures it's very important to look at the sternum which in some people would consider this as the fourth column of the spine. So if there is an injury to the sternum this means that the support for the thoracic cage and the thoracic spine posteriorly might be affected and also it gives an indication about the severity of injury. So as we said, we look into the morphology, give that a score as stated in this picture, and then you look for the integrity of the ligamentous structures. As we said, sometimes it can be intact, so that would take zero. Suspected, which means that we are not sure, that would take two, or injured, that would take three points. For that, you likely will need an MRI scan. Sometimes you can get an idea about this on the CT scan as well. Then finally, you assess the patient neurological status. If the patient is neurologically intact, or has a nerve root symptoms, or a complete cord injury, or incomplete cord injury, or cord equina. You give them a score from zero, or two, or three, and that relies on your physical examination. Finally, you get the score, and you decide on your surgical plan. I hope this simplifies the TLIX score, and simplifies the way that you can describe the morphology of the fracture, and the way on how to look at the posterior ligamentous complex injury. In the next video, we'll talk about the AO spine classification. Stay tuned for that video.